and Moncton's had a uh, long history of good Newfoundlanders, Scott Trask, James Melindy, and a few others. Uh, what's in the Newfoundland water that uh, turns out hockey player? Uh, well, I guess it's just, uh, you know, good coaches and good players all, all over, and uh, I guess we push each other to get better, and, uh, you know, we all know each other, and we all work out together, and we all play together, and it just turns out that, you know, we get good and together and play play in the queue and you know a lot of a lot of uh, Newfoundlanders have uh, been in the NHL and there's a good few now that are doing well and uh, I guess it's just pushing each other harder and yeah. Um, take us through your minor hockey days. Where did you play minor hockey and uh, take us up through maybe start at Pee Wee? Uh, well I started uh, uh, when I was young. I was three when I started hockey and I started uh, with the Avalon Celtics. And uh, I played uh, all my life up through from uh, novice to uh, uh, first year bantam with the Celtics, and uh, uh, had a lot of good times there. And uh, but the competition wasn't very good in Newfoundland, so I moved to uh, uh, Mississauga, Ontario. Uh, my uncle lived there, and I moved in with him for two years, and I played with the Mississauga Senators. And uh, I learned a lot from that experience being away. Uh, you know, I was 14 when I moved away first, so. Uh, it wasn't made it easier to come here without any family. Well, what is that like? Uh, that's awfully young to be picking up, and I I know uh, through the years it was uh, a lot of players that had success in the league. Adam Guy, I'm thinking of uh, in particular, was a good player, but had a hard time leaving home and uh, at a young age, and uh, that affected his career somewhat. Um, to leave home at 14 years old to play hockey, what is that like? Uh, well, it made it a lot easier that I moved in with my uncle, and he had a lot of family. My cousins were there, and uh, but I see I talked to my family every night. Uh, you know, we FaceTime, and I, I talk to my brother uh, on the phone every night, and you know, so I get to talk to him a lot, and uh, you know, they come up for visits and stuff, and it makes it a lot easier. Uh, you know, they're always there when I need them. Still, it's, it's not any different in that way. I, I can talk to them anytime. So, uh, but it is hard, uh, you know, uh, the first few months, uh, you know, when I was 14 and I first moved away with my uncle, I missed, you know, I missed having them around, my fa mom and dad and my brother. And then when I moved here this year, you know, the first few weeks was hard, uh, you know, because then I had no family at all. But, it, you know, it makes it easier that I can call them anytime, you know, you know, I'll see them on FaceTime all the time. So that's You're a unique commodity. There's not very many 16-year-olds in the league, number one. And number two, there's not many 16-year-olds logging the minutes you log. And uh, you're, you're clearly in the top 4D on this team. So that makes you a unique player. Um, how are you handling that? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit of luck and it's a bit of hard work too. You know, you got to take advantage of your opportunities. Uh, when Danik Imam was injured, you know, that's when I took advantage of my opportunity to... Uh, you know, become the uh, in the top four the defenseman in the on the team. But uh, you know, it's all with hard work and dedication, and uh, you know, good luck. Now you're on a Moncton team that's clearly in a rebuild mode, and I think uh, if you go down the roster, you're one of the few bright spots uh, uh, to start the reload. And uh, hopefully, you'll be here when the uh, when the team peaks. Um, just talks about both the the, uh, the struggles of a, of, a re, of a rebuilding team and uh, and how you have to be patient well you know we got a lot of a lot of bright spots in our team you know you look at uh, Ivan Barbashev he's going he's probably going to be in the NHL maybe even next year so that's tough to look at because you know, we won't have him around for very long uh, but you know we got other 16 and 17 year olds that are going to be good players and uh, you know it makes it easier seeing that we're all working hard to get better and you know we struggle this year sometimes sometimes we do well though you know it's a bit of consistency issue but you know to see all the young guys working hard uh, it gives you confidence that in a few years that we're going to be a very good team what player do you look up to us would it be michael Ryder or someone else well you know i i like watching the newfies play uh I, but uh I, i'm a toronto maple leafs fan so uh jake gardner was my favorite player uh, uh well not really growing up because you know he's just coming around now but uh you know, he's my favorite player in the NHL now, and uh, Matt Sundin was was the guy who got me started, and uh, I actually wore his number up until this year, uh, but, uh, you know, it's not really a defenseman's number, so, 13, yeah. 
But, um, you know, there's a lot of guys I look up to. And, you know, I, I got to meet uh, Brad Marchand this year, and, you know, he told me his story. And, uh, you know, it was all about hard work. And, you know, it's not all uh, sunshine and rainbows for the guys who make it to the NHL, right? It's, it's hard work. And, and uh, 